Dylan, we're in trouble. I just got a call from the hospital that your dad has collapsed. Can you come over right now? What do you mean he collapsed? I've got a lot of work to do and I can't leave right now. What are you talking about? It's a family emergency. Frank might be in danger. Why can't you come? Even if I went, there's nothing I could do. I'm not a doctor, and there's no point in just watching him. That's not true. I think just being there for him would make him feel better. I'm sure you would want to be there for him. But, you know, I've got a lot of work to do. If I leave now, I'll get in trouble with my co-workers and my boss will get angry with me. This is not the time to talk about work. Think about how Frank is feeling now. I can't help it even if you say that. You're there. That's good enough for him, isn't it? That's not the point. It's about supporting together as a family. How encouraging it would be for Frank just to have you here. I understand, but I really don't know if I can go now. Can't I come after work? Why are you being so cold? He's the only father you have. You should take better care of him. You'll regret it later. I'm not a doctor, so going there won't change anything. I think it would be more of a problem if you just ditch your work and leave. I can't believe you. It's important that you be here. Do you know how important it is for us to be together in a time like this? But I'm telling you, there's no point in me going. I can't do anything anyway. That's not true. For Frank's peace of mind, you need to come now. I can't support him on my own. For your father's sake, stay with him, please, Dylan. Hey, Amelia, what do you want? What do I want? You should keep me informed more often. Why? What? Do I have to tell you every single time? It's no use saying that now. Where did you go without calling me? You should call me when you're going to be late. Sorry, sorry. My mom called me after work, and I'm at my parents' house to discuss a trip. A trip? I'm going to Tahiti for Christmas with my mom. We had been planning it for a while, but it was suddenly decided. What? Wait a minute. Why did you decide so suddenly? Well... Christmas is less than a week away. I guess it's understandable to be surprised. Actually, Mom was supposed to go with Dad. But since he's in such a bad shape, I had to go instead of him on short notice. Wait a minute. Why Tahiti now? What? Is it unusual to travel to Tahiti for Christmas? It's rather standard, isn't it? But Frank... Who was supposed to go on that trip to Tahiti is in the hospital unconscious, right? Normally, you would cancel the trip at a time like this. I heard that if we cancel the trip now, we would have to pay a huge cancellation fee. If that's the case, then it would be better for me to go instead, and Mom would be happy to go with me. Considering Frank's condition, I don't think she would be in the mood to go on a trip. Why are you so insensitive? Really? I mean, I don't have to think that much, do I? He's in a vegetative state and he's never going to wake up again. And we're not allowed to visit him anyway. I don't think it matters what we do in the meantime. It's a matter of feelings. I can't imagine going on a trip in this situation. If I were you, I would cancel the trip without worrying about the cancellation fee. Hmm. Well, whatever. You're not going, and I'm going. Are you really going? I really don't understand. Why are you so cold? Oh, God. You're really stubborn, aren't you? I'm going to Tahiti no matter what you say. I'm packing my bags for the trip tonight. And then, I'm staying at my parents' house and going straight to Tahiti. There's no point in stopping me. Hey, Dylan. You need to reconsider a little more. Whatever. What is it already? I really can't believe it. 
Amelia, I'm going to go now. I'm so excited that the plane I'm supposed to board is right in front of me right now. I feel lucky to be able to go to Tahiti for Christmas. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. Well then, I'm getting on the plane now. You're really going? Are you really going to Tahiti under these circumstances? I can't believe you. Yes, I am really going. Mom wants to go, and it's my job as her son to make it happen. I'm just doing my mom a favor as her son. Besides, she's been planning this trip for a long time. Even if my father's condition suddenly changed, I couldn't cancel it considering my mother's feelings, could I? In the first place, when her own husband is unconscious in the hospital, I don't know what your mother is thinking. Normally, she wouldn't even consider a trip at a time like this. I don't understand what kind of nerve she has. Stop messing around. You're always complaining like that. Don't tell us what to do. Let me tell you something. If Frank wakes up while you are away, I will tell him the truth. I'll tell him what you were doing. When he wakes up, I'll make sure he knows how irresponsible you guys were. You can do whatever you want, but he's not going to wake up anyway. You're dreaming. I don't care what you say. Well, if he wakes up, you take care of him during our Christmas trip. Of course, don't cut corners. You'll take care of Dad. We'll have fun in Tahiti. We'll be back in a week. We're going to have a good time, so you guys hang in there. See you later. Even if you regret it later, it's too late. Your irresponsibility is truly appalling. Amelia, Merry Christmas. Ah, oh, Frank, Merry Christmas. How are you feeling? Well, I'm getting by. The hospital food is surprisingly good, and I'm well enough to enjoy it. I'm glad to hear that. By the way, did my wife and son go to Tahiti after all? Uh, yes, they left yesterday as scheduled. I see. I'm sorry I couldn't stop them. I told Dylan to stop many times. He never even went to the hospital. That's okay. I want you to keep quiet about the fact that I am already awake. I'm the one who asked them not to force themselves to visit me. I was seeing if they would come to the hospital without me or you saying anything. Then, after all, are you not going to change your mind? No, I'm not going to change my mind. When I had my accident and was rushed to the emergency room... I heard that my sister's family and you were the only ones who came to the hospital. I wanted to see whether they go on a trip to Tahiti or not. I wanted to see that first before I make my decision. And in the end, they went to Tahiti. So now I have my answer. Frank. I'm sorry I brought you into this. But now that I know my son is just as guilty... Yes, I understand. I'll make up my mind and cooperate with you. Thank you. Hey, you're free tomorrow, right? I know you're only taking care of my dad, so you should be free. Don't talk like that. We'll be back there tomorrow. You can pick us up at the airport. What? How long do you think it takes to get to the airport from my place? It takes more than an hour and a half each way. And if you think about the time and fatigue on the way back, it's a huge burden. Why don't you just take a cab home? Why don't you do that? I have a lot of luggage. We have a lot of suitcases and we bought a lot of souvenirs. It's too much for us to carry on our own. You're my wife, but you can't listen to me and my mother. You're supposed to cooperate with us as a member of the family. I have more important things to do than that. Frank is awake, so you have to go visit him. What? Really? When I went to his hospital, he was awake. I was surprised at first, but I was really happy to see him awake. 
What? Are you serious? Yes, it's true. He says he can get text, and he wants to say something to you now. I'm sure he has a lot to tell you. He woke up? No kidding. That can't be true. Hey, it's me. Dad, really? Oh, is that you, Dylan? How are you enjoying your trip? Are you enjoying Tahiti? Oh, no. You went instead of me, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. We went to many places. Oh, yeah? I bet you must have been very satisfied with your trip to Tahiti, even if you had to leave your unconscious father behind. What? You're coming back tomorrow, right? I hope you enjoy the rest of your trip to the fullest, in preparation for the hell that awaits you in the future. I'm going to have a long talk with you about what you were doing. Um, Dad, what do you mean? I'm a little scared. All right, let's get to it. It's time to pay for all the fun you've had. Don't think you can escape. What? What are you going to do? Are you really going to do something? What are you trying to do to us? You're really hyped up, aren't you? I wonder if you're going to surprise us with something. You're my dad, so I'm sure it won't be a big deal. Tell your mom to be prepared. The real test as a family is about to begin. You're not going to get away with this. What? What do you mean by be prepared? Don't tell me something's really going to happen. Huh? Something's wrong. Dad, are you really mad at me? Are you really mad at me? No, you're not just mad. I have a feeling something more serious is going to happen. Amelia, I just arrived home. What the hell are you doing? I don't understand. You better explain it to me. Why the divorce papers? You just got home? Welcome home. What's with the divorce papers? It is what it is. You met up with your lover in Tahiti, didn't you? What? Why? Your father was investigating your mother's affair. He found out that you were cheating on me and your mother knew it. That's what he told me. Well, he knows about my mother's affair too. Of course. Mother and son each took a trip to Tahiti with their cheating partners. I hope you had a good time. No, wait. If you think about it, the timeline is not right. He had just woken up from a coma. He didn't have the time to do all that research. We started investigating the affair six months ago, and we've been worried about it for a while. But now we have some evidence that confirms it. Frank was already awake a month ago. Even after he regained consciousness, he didn't say anything. Huh? Is that true? I had no idea. He just woke up when I went to visit him. That's when he told me everything. You didn't tell me and Mom. Why would you do that? When I told him that you and your mother never came to the hospital, he asked me not to tell you guys. Why? Why did you have to do that? I guess he wanted to see how much you cared about him. Why did you bother to do that? Dylan, because he already knew that you were not his child. I kept it quiet for a long time, but now I can't hide it anymore. Huh? How did you know that? I never told you that. I don't know when you found out about your birth, but you must have felt it for a long time. Your mother's lover, the one who accompanied you on this trip to Tahiti, is your real father. That's why you didn't mind going with her. In other words, the members of the trip were your parents, who are related by blood, and their son, plus your cheating partner. I'm sure that it was four of you guys, right? You were aware that the family was distorted, but you pretended not to see it. We're that exposed? Damn it! How did this happen? I wonder if your mother has noticed the divorce papers in your parents' living room by now. 
I bet you'll find out what's waiting for you where you're going together. What? Divorce papers? Why would there be such a thing? Frank is in the hospital and asked me to leave them for him. He has known about this for a long time, and yet he has endured it without telling me. But he couldn't take it anymore. What? I didn't hear that. Oh, yes, yes. He was transferred to another hospital. So it's too late for you to run to the previous hospital now. You don't know where he went either, and you don't need to know. Where was he transferred to? You're going to have to tell me that. I don't know that either. It was your father's own decision. Huh? You ask my father for all this in-depth information, and you don't know his whereabouts? We've decided to act separately after your return. After last night's greeting, we deleted our contact information from our phones. So we are no longer in touch. That means he doesn't know where I am now either. If you really want to contact him, please ask the lawyer who is scheduled to visit your mother. He hired a lawyer? Of course he did. By the way, I'm also asking you to go through a lawyer from now on too. You too? This is not happening. You saw his business card with the divorce papers. That's the lawyer who's going to represent me. Hey, let's talk about this once. We've only been married for three years, and I think there's room for us to start over. What does a man who cheated on his wife in less than three years have to say about that? Besides, no matter how much it turns out that we are not blood-related, to Frank, who raised you ever since you were born, I can't understand a man who would treat him that badly. I really feel sorry for Frank, so it's only natural that I want a divorce, right? But hey... Then this is the last time. Huh? Alimony, please, in one lump sum. Huh. Um, I... This is Dylan. Dad, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I still think of you as my father, and I've always respected you. That's why I'm really sorry about this Tahiti thing. Mom really wanted to go, and I wanted to force her to go. I thought I could take your place. But I realize now that I was wrong. Oh, just in time. I was just about to tell you. Please tell your mother that I'm not going to change my mind about the divorce. Based on everything that's happened, there's no going back. Besides, Dylan, I'm breaking off the relationship with you. I have no regrets for raising you up until now, but I'm disappointed in your behavior. Oh no. I'm going to cancel this phone I'm using now in the near future. I will cut off all means of communication from you. Therefore, soon there will be no direct contact from me to you. You'll have to go through my lawyer from now on. Oh no, Dad. What am I supposed to do? I'm not going to talk to you anymore. From now on, you're on your own, just as I have done. Goodbye. Wait, Dad. Frank, through his lawyer, had Dylan file for annulment of inheritance. As a result, instead of Dylan not receiving his share of the property, he would not be sued by Frank for alimony and Frank filed a claim for alimony against Dylan's biological father. I claimed alimony from Dylan's partner, with whom he had an affair. The company found out about Dylan's incident and started whispering about it within the company. He could no longer stand the cold stares from those around him, so he left the company voluntarily. Dylan, his mother, Dylan's father, and the woman with whom he was having an affair were all in debt and living without money. They deserve it. I heard that the four of them fought constantly and eventually scattered. Meanwhile, Frank and I were able to start a new life. He has overcome many years of hardship and is now living a peaceful life. I am also trying to be supportive of Frank, seeing him regularly as we move forward into a new future.
May I have a word with you? Melissa, you have been lying to me. You never said a word about your father's educational background, did you? I don't like to get along with undereducated relatives. Well, I cannot accept it. He didn't go to university, right? You are about to disappoint me. Hey, why don't you say something? First of all, thank you for coming today. It was a pleasure to have you here at our new home. You don't have to thank me now. You tricked me, didn't you? No, I didn't trick you. As you know, Melissa, everyone in my family has a college degree. We're a very talented family. And not just any university, but a highly ranked university. You know that? Um, yes. What's with that attitude? My family has nothing to do with undereducated people. Of course, we've never had any relationship with those low-class people in our lives. And you know why? Um, why? Because they are useless. What? Useless? Don't say such a terrible thing. If you didn't go to university, that means you only went through compulsory education. Which means you can only do the bare minimum you need to do. In other words, they have no ambition. There's no benefit in getting along with someone at that level, right? Uh, is that so? There are people who have ambition no matter which school they graduated from. I think that's just your prejudice. You're so annoying. Of course it's true. I have always excluded people with low education from my life on purpose. Oh, I'm feeling uncomfortable. You just give me mindless replies. You don't understand anyway, do you, what I'm talking about? You're the daughter of undereducated father, so your comprehension is poor. You're a disaster. But he and your husband seemed to hit it off and had a lot to talk about. You know what? My husband is a producer at the TV station. He can get along with anyone, no matter how low-ranked. Don't take it wrong and say they hit it off. <laughs> I wish you realized that. But they seemed to be enjoying their conversation earlier. They were smiling. He sure looked like he was having fun. Only your father. <laughs> <laughs> I think he misunderstands that he got in a higher class just because his undereducated daughter married into a well-educated family. I mean, he looked really happy. I hate it when people with low education are like this. No, that's not true. You don't know anything. Besides, did Ben know that your father didn't go to university? He didn't know. He heard about it for the first time when you came today. Oh, then he must be angry, right? No, it's nothing to be angry about. He doesn't mind about academic background. He's a person who sees through the essence of others. Huh? You think your father is worth something? Give me a break. I'm not joking. My son is so sweet, he can't say it out loud. Hey, since Ben can't say it, I'll say it for you. Break off the relationship with your father. What? Why should I do that? It's impossible to break off relationship with my father unless there's something going on. It's not that big of a deal. He's embarrassing. I can't tell anyone that my son's father-in-law didn't graduate university. Please don't say such terrible thing. What does the fact that my father didn't go to university have to do with you? Why do you assume that he's useless? Hey! <laughs> what? Are you talking back to me? Seriously? <laughs> I respect my father. I can't put up with it if you say terrible things about him. Oh! <laughs> then what do you respect about a person who doesn't have a college degree? He doesn't have a good educational background, so he has to work all his life, right? I don't like that kind of life. It feels empty to do manual labor, and it's a sin to be uneducated, you know? It's sad to be incompetent. My husband graduated from a decent university. 
so my life has been easy. It's too bad your mother has an uneducated husband. <laughs> I can only say that I feel sorry for her. <laughs> That's terrible. You don't have to say it like that. Anyway, I won't accept you as a wife if you don't cut him off. Please cancel the marriage with my son. I won't allow you to bring shame to my family. Why do you have to say that? What kind of trouble have I or my father caused you? That's how it works! If you want to complain, why don't you tell your father, who chose not to learn? As I said, I respect him. He has plenty of knowledge. He has nothing to be ashamed of, and no one has anything to complain about. Even though he does manual labor? He's a professional. I guess that's one way of putting it. But I've always thought there was something wrong with you. I didn't like you from the beginning. Now it makes sense. You didn't like me? Right. I didn't know why. I just got a bad vibe from you. I couldn't help but feel a hatred. No. Why do you have to say that? You made it clear today. You were raised by an undereducated father. Of course, you were raised differently. <laughs> no wonder you have no class. Now that the reason is clear, I feel better. Please don't say all those terrible things. I have no intention of cutting him off. Then you can't be my son's wife. No marriage. Then you don't have to accept me. And your education is the only thing you can be proud of, huh? That's what people who don't have confidence in their education always say. That. Your husband warned you about that earlier, didn't he? He told you not to show off something that happened decades ago. You weren't listening to him. He is a kind man. He must have felt sorry for you too. But I'm sure he's grieving inside. That his son, whom he raised so well, married the daughter of a family like that. I'm his wife. I know how my husband feels. <laughs> my father's educational background has nothing to do with our marriage. My parents took good care of me and so was Ben. Thanks to them, we are living happily now. Isn't that enough? No, no, no. Your family is different. Can you really say that you are happy? Then let me tell you something. Ben, he often talks about how his father is a great man. But everything he says about you is full of disappointing things. I was going to keep quiet, but... What? What do you mean by that? What did he say about me? I can't tell you, but you don't seem like the kind of parent that your kids would respect. If you want to know, then ask him directly. What's with you? You're so cocky. Tell me right now, what did he say? I can't tell you. Just tell me. Then let me ask him. Give me a minute. Parents have the right to know what their children say. Why do I have to get his permission? Why don't you just tell me now? It seems like it's okay, so let me tell you. You're always talking down to people and saying boring things. He says so quite often. What? Who are you talking about? It's about you, right? No. It's about you. And he told me more. He stopped bringing his friends home because you looked down on them and their family and laughed at them. He doesn't want his important friends to meet you. That's for the sake of my children. Ben doesn't need useless things in his life. I need to get rid of them, even if it makes my heart bleed. It's our duty as parents to choose our children's friends. But when you walk with him, you always say things like, that person didn't graduate from university, or his father went to night school, but he gets carried away. How embarrassing. Right? Those are all true, so it can't be helped. What's wrong with telling the truth? I see. That's how you think. But Ben says that you're a full-time housewife who doesn't do enough housework, and you are a mother who he cannot respect. Aren't you ashamed of yourself as a housewife and a mother? You're lying. You were raised by a father like that, so your thinking ability is weak. That's why you lie like that. He would never say such a thing. You're the one lying. 
Well then, ask him yourself. Listen carefully with your own ears. Neither I nor Ben will break off the relationship with my father. And Ben says it doesn't matter what his educational background is. In fact, he even respects my father. Respect? What kind of nonsense are you saying? Marrying a strange woman like you made him crazy. Fine. If he is also brainwashed, he's unnecessary. What? Unnecessary? What do you mean? It means what it means. Even if you have grandchildren, don't bring them here. A child with your father's blood would be stupid. I don't want to get involved either, so don't call me again. What? I can't deal with idiots. It's ridiculous to even talk to you. I'm cutting you off, Ben, your family, everything, okay? Are you sure? I don't need useless people. Having my husband is enough for me. I'm happy with that. <laughs> Besides, he's retiring next year, so he's working on his last big project. It's the one that you guys will never have a chance to do. He's planning to exceed the TV station's expectations with all his best. Don't make him think about unnecessary things. That's... that's great. Isn't it? When you're educated, you can do that kind of job too. You can work on all kinds of projects, only if you are educated. After he finishes it, I'm going on a world trip with him by using his pension. I know he's secretly getting me a ticket. Your parents will never be able to afford it, though. <laughs> Are you still speaking evil of him? Well, we'll live on our own. I'm done with you guys. Are you sure you want to cut us off? Huh? Of course. I don't care if I get rid of you guys. As long as I have my husband, I can live a comfortable life. I'm a winner, and I don't need any distractions in my life. Distractions? I'm talking about you guys. Well then, don't ever contact me again. Fiona, I saw the show your husband made. It was wonderful. My father was very impressed too. He said it was awesome. Of course. That's because he's good at what he does. Your stupid father just looked good too on TV. But he introduced him in great detail, didn't he? He said he was a professional with a skill that only a few people have, and that he's gaining worldwide attention and recognition overseas. Depends on how you say it. His skill of direction is great. Let me tell you, my father is a fine craftsman, even though he didn't go to university. Are craftsmen useless to you? That's not true, is it? He's one of the few craftsmen in the States. They are needed all over the world. They are valuable. So? You value your academic background so much, but who needs you? Who needs your educational background? Are you that valuable? How dare you talk like that? You're really cheeky. Don't you think it's a little vain to show off only your old educational background? We live in the world full of new things. Is that what you see? Shut up! You can use what you learned for life. But how can you use that knowledge when you're a stay-at-home mom? It's been decades since you graduated from university. And since you haven't had a single thing to be proud of in those decades, you're still bragging about it, aren't you? Don't you feel empty? Huh? Don't be so cocky. In the first place... We've already broken off our relationship. Who told you to text me? Don't reach me without permission. So, you're going to live on your own from now on? Huh? Alone? Have you lost your mind? I have my husband. I'm going on a world trip with him with his pension. Your parents can't receive pension anyway. He'll just have to continue working as a craftsman for the rest of his life. Well, your husband who allowed you to be a housewife comfortably, already went on a trip. Huh? What are you talking about? Hey, you must have misunderstood something. He never said he was going on a trip with you, did he? At least, he never said that. 
What? What do you mean? He told me that he and my father were going to France together. What? Why? Why would such an undereducated person? The show was a huge success and he got a bonus, so they planned to go on a trip with two of them. They were really looking forward to it. They seemed to hit it off pretty well. My well-educated husband would never get along with an undereducated person. Stop talking nonsense. Are you still talking like that? They both take pride in their work. They said something like, we were meant to have our jobs. <laughs> It's natural that they get along. There's no way he's going on a trip with your father. He's supposed to go with me. But I drove them to the airport this morning. What else is there to do at the airport? <laughs> What? No, you're kidding, right? He really went on a trip without a word to me? Oh, I have a message for you from your husband. What is it? I already talked to a lawyer to get divorced, so you'll receive a paper soon. Make sure to fill it out. I don't want to see your face anymore. What? What do you mean? He said that he can't face someone who doesn't even take care of the house every day after he retires. In other words, you are useless and unnecessary. I can't think of anything else. <laughs> no. Then what am I supposed to do? Hey, Melissa, what do you think? I don't know. You've said all those things to me. I don't need you either. Besides my father, myself, Ben and the grandchildren that may be born in the future. It was you who said you would cut off all of us, wasn't it? Then I take it back! No, no, you don't have to. I have no intention of getting along with an idiot who can only show off educational background too. I'm sick of you. <laughs> My father and father-in-law came back from their trip in a good mood and hit it off. For some reason... Fiona stayed at home the whole time. She tried her best, but her husband kicked her out and divorced her. She was unable to do anything on her own and asked me for help. I smiled kindly and politely declined her request. A few months later, she heard that we were going to have a baby, so she made a very insistent request to see me after the baby was born. But I politely declined that request too. <laughs> she deserved it. Her academic background, of which she was so proud, was no use. On the other hand, my father's job was booked up for the next few years because he was featured in a TV program. My husband, who strongly admired him, somehow became his apprentice, and they seem to be having fun with my father-in-law, who comes to check on us from time to time. I told my father-in-law that I was really happy to have met the right person. And he said he's so happy to have divorced the worst wife and laughed jokingly with a big smile on his face. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. It means a lot to us. See you next time.